Hello again, and this is Father Vu, and I'm here with Mr. Ron Petrusha. And in our last podcast, uh, we talked a little bit about how Ron uh, became Catholic and active again. Well, he was baptized and born and raised Catholic, but then he kind of left for a while. His journey went elsewhere, and then it came back after reading the Song of Songs. And uh, so we're just going to talk today about the sacrament of the Eucharist and uh, some of the some of the meaning behind that. And uh, so Ron and I, we're going to just kind of speak spontaneously about the meaning of the sacrament of the Eucharist for us. Okay. So Ron, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Father. Wonderful. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Thank you for doing this podcast. And, you know, this is... Thank you for doing this podcast. Yeah. This is our second uh, time doing this. And uh, so we don't really know what the outcome is going to be, but uh, we'll ho- we're hoping for the best. So today we're going to talk about the Sacrament of Eucharist. And as you know, this is the source and summit of our faith, the Eucharist. And it's the life of the church that we gather for daily mass and for weekend masses uh, because Jesus said, do this in memory of me. And uh, we recall what the Lord did at the Last Supper. So um, what's your uh, value? What do you value about the Eucharist? Um, I know that's a big question, but... uh, Two things. Really, one is the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. But the, the second, which I, I think for me really gives the Eucharist its rich meaning, is that we are the sacrifice in the Eucharist. We make ourselves a living sacrifice before the Lord. And by doing that, we can become transformed into the image of Christ. So I find that really powerful, and I find that to be a, a, a an overwhelmingly powerful feature of the Eucharist. I mean, I, I know for myself, I feel that I've been transformed. Uh, I mean, it's obviously a process, and but but I feel that I'm a much different person uh, from participating, from partaking of the Eucharist. Uh, than I was before. Um, And that's very good because, you know, on the one hand, you have Christ present, the body, blood, soul, and divinity, his real presence with us at the sacrament of the Eucharist, the mystery of his presence. And also on the other hand, on the second point is, as you're making, is that we unite ourselves to Christ and we see this valuable element of sacrifice and what he has done for us. And that we are called to basically, you know, give our life in service to Him. Mm-hmm. So and to things. join our sacrifice with His. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah. well, what do you think about uh, in terms of the mystery of His real presence? And I know that uh, I remember for me, like St. Thomas Aquinas, um, he talked about how. He, the accidents think, remain. Yeah, the accidents remain, mm-hmm. but the substance mm-hmm. right. change. And the yeah, substance so, changes. So there's yeah. that transubstantiation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but it's also like this one time where uh, it, it's about the senses, and you know we take in through the five senses of see, see, touch, taste. Um, you know, feel here and so in those five senses um, so we can see the world and uh, the reality of the world Uh, and um, even though we see the bread and even though we and the wine and we touch the bread and the wine and so all of our senses is telling us that it's bread and wine right Uh, but the but this so we close down some of the other senses so that we can uh, focus on the sense of hearing because those are the words of Jesus. As he said, this is my body and this is my blood and do this in memory of me. And so we trust 
in what the Lord Jesus is saying, and I, I find that very valuable right. you know, for me in regards to the Eucharist. Yeah. And certainly the sacrament of the Eucharist, there's so much uh, to talk about because of the history and the tradition that's passed down from generation to generation, and even what we have now, you, you know, there's a, I remember at Easter Vigil, this one lady, she was saying that there's just so many moving parts. <laughs> there's so many things that are happening right. at, uh, the, at the Mass. Right. And, uh, and sometimes I feel like... And not only Easter Mass, every Mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And even, you know, like this one time, uh, I remember we were talking about uh, in the Mass and how from beginning to end is always about the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and everything we do, you know, the words and the actions, is about the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and even making the sign of the cross is the Trinity, mm -hmm. blessing people with, in the name of the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, you know, we're asking the Holy Spirit to come down, the epiclesis, and to bless uh, the elements of bread and wine, and so it becomes the body and blood of Christ. And, so we're, and the second epiclesis, to join us with Christ's sacrifice. Right, exactly. Yeah. And um, so there is a lot of, you know, things in the sacrament of the Eucharist. And I find, like, I learn so much, you know, every time. And maybe there's a single word or maybe from the sacred scripture, when we break open God's word, and there's always, you know, one thing I learn, and uh, and almost, you know, most of the masses, there's always something that, you know, like a takeaway, um, like a lesson or a value for the day, and uh, I find it very meaningful, and uh, and you know, with the mm -hmm. liturgy of the word, and also liturgy of the Eucharist as well too. And what do you, like, let's say, for instance, uh, what would be your favorite part of the Mass? You know, if you were, I mean, we all, it's all, it's, they're, they're all good, too. But what's your favorite part? I think there are many, but the creed. The creed. Okay. I really enjoy. And what about the creed? What you... the, the creed, in, in some sense, is the beginning of, I guess you could call it a, the mystical portion of the Mass. When we, when we recite the creed, we're joining with all of those who ever have and ever will recite the creed. And so that's the beginning of the Mass being celebrated in heaven in many ways. Uh, so I really enjoy the creed. And then also St. Athanasius, who is one of the movers behind the creed, is one of my my favorite fathers. So the creed is enjoyable. Uh, I really love the creed. But there's the, other formulations of the creed, right? Mm -hmm. So you got the Apostles' Creed, and you got the Nicene Creed, and you right? And the Nicene Constantinopolitan creed. creed. Yeah, right. Right. And so you could see the development of the creed over the years, uh, but also because it's a response to the heresies mm -hmm. at the time, so the Gnostic heresy, um, and then the Arian heresy. Right. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I guess the, I think the Apostles' Creed was a response to the Gnostic heresy, and then the the um, Nicene Creed was in response to the Arian, the Arian. heresy. Yeah, mm -hmm. where Arius said uh, there was a time when he was not, and so uh, it made Jesus as if it's less, a little bit less than God the Father, mm -hmm. and that uh, he was created in here. And not of the same substance, yeah, he was a created substance. being, a creature. Yeah, and there the response within the creed is God from God, life from light, true God from true God. God not made consubstantial with the Father, which means with the same substance. Yeah. 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 Um, 
And sometimes, though, that do you feel as if uh, there are people that would recite the creed, but they don't really uh, think about it because it just happens automatically? I think that that's yeah. a problem, an issue in Catholicism, since I mean, the liturgy, the entire Mass, in many ways, is ritualistic. There's profound meaning and profound symbolism uh, and profound mysticism in the Mass. But if you you can easily miss all of those things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, surveys show that about 70% of Catholics don't actually believe in, in the real presence. Mm -hmm. Some simply don't think it, you know, it's modern. And, and for others, it's, you know, there's a separation between reality and belief. You know, so the church teaches X, I'll believe X, but we know that X doesn't really correspond to reality. It's just what the church teaches, and I'm supposed to believe. So there's that, that difference. And then there's also just sort of becoming, you know, the, 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 there's a ritual tends to have two effects that are, contradictory. One is that it frees us to concentrate on the essence of what's happening, but the other is that it allows us to forget the essence mm -hmm. of yeah. what's happening. That's true, right? Because it, we're auto, autopilot, mm -hmm. and so we right. just kind of go and with so, the flow. So you kind of, you know, recite the creed, recite the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord's Prayer is how we are taught to pray, or how Jesus teaches us to pray. So. You just sort of do that automatically. But if you think about it, that's not actually what Jesus is trying to do. He's, he's in fact, I mean, he had just finished condemning uh, babbling uh, that, that the pagans do. And, and why do the pagans babble? Because they have to babble to find the right words to please the gods. And so Jesus isn't trying to give us the right words to please God. He's trying to teach us how to pray and to connect with God. So his prayer has much more meaning than, you know, simply the ritual. Uh, but that's true of everything in the Mass. I mean, the, the Mass has profound meaning. And, and for many people, it's simply a repetition of the same thing that happened yesterday with, with, uh, with very little awareness of sure. what's really going on. I find that, you know, in the um, book that I was reading on, by Pope Benedict XVI, um, he talked about the Mass and the ritual, and in many ways, because we have this ritual, uh, the value is that it creates, it allows us to have freedom. It's a ritual, right. gives us freedom. Um, and uh, sometimes we can be enslaved to creativity. Uh, because we're always trying to invent or create something new, whereas the Mass has been with us for a long time, you know, since, what, 2,000 years with, uh, with the Apostles after Jesus. And so it's been with us and within our tradition. And uh, we don't create it, uh, we don't invent new things, and we try not to change as much as we can, we try to keep it consistent. And so it gives us that freedom. But at the same time, we can go on autopilot and then we can um, uh, lose some of the meaning and the value mm -hmm. in the Mass unless uh, we take time to educate ourselves and take time to learn more about the traditions of the Church and uh, why the priest does certain things or why the why is there the response and why does it fo you know, why does the creed follow right after the homily? Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. And uh, the the product, you know, that we have right now. So And simply why does the church believe this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Yeah, okay, so let's pause for a moment and then we can uh, continue the conversation. Mm -hmm.